The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. How are you? Happy Saturday. I'm good. Happy Saturday morning. Happy Saturday morning. Okay, take it away, my friend. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we got XMR USD. We're looking at the weekly time frame. Um, sorry, I'm getting an echo, actually. I'll just have to ignore it. Oh, that sucks. Uh, okay, so XMR USD, weekly time frame. It basically a big rising triangle. Um, the hope here is that we break this resistance and then we head towards the top. Uh, let's go to the shorter time frame so we can see that more clearly. So we're very close. Technically, we've just pumped a tiny bit above the sloping, the downsloping resistance. And with any luck, this will continue. I am a little bit concerned right now about how much longer this pump can continue. But for now, um, I've taken some profit on my shit coins. Uh, but Monero, I'm just going to let this thing ride. It's my hodl. Uh, I figure I can trade all the other crap, but you know, Monero should be, it, Monero deserves more than my degenerate trading practices. So um, here you can see a little bit closer. We've basically, we've broken one day above this. We want to hold a little bit further. I think it's still very possible that we can come back down to this line right here. I think everything really depends on what happens with the rest of cryptocurrency. So we can also take a look at XMR BTC and even though we've had a lot of complaints from the community about this recent drop, the reality is that we're sitting at 008. Uh, so that's really a great place compared to where we were for the past couple years. And it's possible, again, like we talked about last week, it's possible we might need to come back down to this area. If we do, that would probably happen because the rest of cryptocurrency pumped significantly. Uh, so that's it's kind of a good problem to have unless you only have Monero, uh, which I guess some people only have Monero and that's fine. Um, in terms of making mad gains, I think it's a good idea to participate in some of the other craziness, uh, but that's a personal decision. So let's go a little bit closer time frame. So this is looking a little bit to me like it's out of exhaustion, right? This big move that's happened here, we're already pumping back to the upside. It, it looks to me like Monero should have a little bit of a rebound here. At the same time, by saying that, it's very possible that we'll be seeing the, not the end of, but a pullback in the broader market. So I guess maybe I went a little bit out of order because um, I keep talking about the macro because uh, that is influencing things right now. But that's fine. Uh, I love Monero, so we can just start here. XMR versus ETH. You notice I've kind of had to redraw these lines a little bit, but we're still sitting in a very clear pattern, this this rising wedge pattern right here. So um, looks like we're going to stay here for a little bit, maybe keep doing this. At some point, it's going to break one way or the other. It's such a long time frame, if you'll notice, that this area right here is May. So perhaps we get a nice big run in stocks and crypto. Monero just kind of holds this inside uh, rising wedge, and then... Perhaps whenever this run is done, maybe it's in May, maybe it's over here in June. I think that would be a good opportunity for Monero to continue its bull run versus Bitcoin and versus Ethereum. So we can go ahead and look at the divergences. One thing I've done here is that I've changed the look back. So this is 2,880 timeframe periods and we're on the five minute candles. So I believe this is the 10 day. If you do the math on this, I believe we're looking back the average of every five minutes uh, for the past 10 days. Or sorry, not the average, but the closing differential in crack in price versus these other exchanges for every five minute increment. And so if you multiply uh, that, if you multiply that out, this should be 10 days, I think. Don't quote me on that because I, I probably have that wrong or something. Anyways, the point of this is that you can see that exchanges, including Binance and Red, since about the New Year's, like right around January 4th, it looks like, they went into positive divergences and they basically just stayed here overall. Now, one thing that I, this chart that I've showed you before, usually had something like 24 or 48, which would be the two and four hours. And if we go to that, you can see that it oscillates much more around the zero point. 
So you have to kind of expand the look back in the time frame. You have to average everything out to really get the broader picture of what's happening. But overall, we continue to see positive price divergences. Now, this actually has me concerned just a little bit because are they accumulating Monero and do they intend to hold on to that? Are the exchanges going to use this at some point to try and sell it back down? How much can they do that? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But that is something that's a phenomenon that we saw. Now, unfortunately, I can't take a look at this exact chart on the five minute time frames all the way back to 2020. Um, TradingView just doesn't provide the data back that far. But um, it, it is a bit of a concern. Uh, I do wonder how much Monero they might be acquiring with the intention of later suppressing the price while they're pumping other things. We'll just have to wait and see on that. For now, our price looks good. Our even though we've had a pullback in XMR BTC ratio, uh, things are still looking great there. So really can't complain about that. We, uh, we're sitting here with on Bitfinex more longs than we have shorts. And that changed again right at the new year. And so that's looking nice. Overall, the XMR dominance across the whole space, we broke through this very, very long uh, descending resistance. Looks like we might be turning that into support right here. We would want to see price uh, get above the kind of this area right here that we were just at. We'll see if that plays out or not. Uh, the, the other big part, the other big place to see on this chart is what we thought was the bottom of the XMR dominance chart. So that's the dotted line. Uh, we definitely would like to see us come up here. I think it's going to be difficult to get past this area. Um, I'm not saying that we don't, but it will probably pose significant resistance, especially since we're seeing the rest of cryptocurrency um, making big moves. So the thing that should be on people's mind is how much longer can these moves continue? So um, with that, let's go ahead and expand to the macro and then we'll at the end talk about crypto and we'll try and figure out what might be some good plays there. Uh, let's start with Dixie. Uh, the dollar index. So we're on the weekly time frame. I wanted to zoom out a little bit today so that we could get a better picture of how this thing looks. You can see we're kind of in this big rising wedge pattern. This was the cryptocurrency and stocks bull market. We broke down from that just a little bit, but then it came right back. So it looks a little bit like that could be, <laughs> that was probably some kind of uh, manipulation by insiders or who, who knows, maybe not. Uh, currency markets are huge, so it's a lot harder to manipulate those than, say, cryptocurrency markets. Uh, so overall, we're sitting at this resistance right here. And that would kind of get us the indication that the dollar might be ready to start going up a little bit. It might bounce off of this resistance line here. You would think, well, why wouldn't we just drop down like we did last time? And the answer is because we're not in a 2020 situation where they're massively expanding the M2 and printing money. And we're not, we don't have the whole hype cycle going into a massive bull market. This would be a very natural place for the dollar index to find some support and then maybe take uh, a rebound. If you remember, I was saying for really for quite a while that I was expecting the dollar to eventually bounce back to the upside. And it was a few weeks ago when we saw this peak that just got rejected and we said, okay, this probably means the dollar index is going down further. And that's the reason why I personally didn't take any profit after having got back into the market for the past few weeks. At this moment, um, I actually have taken a little bit of profit. It just seems too responsible. I know that cryptocurrency can sometimes just do 2x, 5x, whatever. Um, but we've had such a nice run that, again, it just looks like it was time to at least lock in some of those profits, uh, especially with the potential that we could be sitting at support on the dollar index and maybe we have another rebound here there's a couple other confluence things happening at that area so uh let's let's unlock some of these shorter time frames turn off the big macro stuff and then we'll look at the shorter time frames all right so we're on the four hour chart now and dollar has basically been in this channel and it's actually been on the downside of this channel and so it it does look like it's kind of rolling under it does look like it's starting to find support Breaking, like one of the first things you would expect to see is to break on the upside of this sort of the splitter of this channel right here. It's not exactly a splitter, right? Because it's not straight down the middle. Um, 
but it is kind of like your interim resistance line. So breaking above that is really, if you're trading, that's a sign that you would want to think about taking profit, getting out of the market. You've had such nice gains if you got in um, at the times I was recommending end of December. Some people were even buying all through December. So, you know, it, it's never, they say it's never wrong to take profit. All right. Now, even though the dollar index is showing us the potential for a turnaround temporarily, the overnight repurchase agreements at the Federal Reserve have basically continued to do what we expected. Um, again, that was an exhaustion wick. That was uh, sort of a fake out against the momentum which had already rolled over on the standard deviation bands. And you can see we kind of stayed here at the one CDEV, uh, standard deviation, and then we are now below that. So essentially, these are trending down, right? Overnight repurchase agreements are trending down. So that money has to go somewhere. Now, I guess institutions could just hold it and change it into bonds or something. And probably a lot of them have done that. But a lot of them also redeploy this cash into the stock market and to risk assets. They drop it into leverage. And again, this is anti-correlated with positive movement in stocks and crypto. Now, you can also see that we are getting close to the, to the bottom side of this uh, broadening megaphone pattern. So it's possible that we could find some support down there and maybe this makes a temporary correction. Again, the way that everything is unfolding, any kind of bounce here would probably be temporary and then we would see stocks and crypto continue to move to the upside. Now, what might drive this in a fundamental sense? We have the Federal Reserve meeting next week on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And I think the consensus is either 25 basis points or 50 basis points. So uh, we'll talk about this a bit more, but it does look like there's potential for some fear going into that meeting. And we can see it in some of the charts, the way, the way they're unfolding. So uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Again, it's another reason why I thought it was a good idea to take some profit. But overall, things still look pretty good. Like there's everything setting up just fine for us to continue making a nice run. We probably just need a little a healthy pullback right here. Uh, we're looking at oil. If you remember, we talked about we we want to stay in this channel right here. And so far, that's holding just nicely. We we really don't want to break to the upside of this. So that's looking nice. Nothing uh, nothing exciting there, but that's exactly how we want. All right, let's take a look at gold. This is the monthly time frame. So you can see that we've got basically a, a large rising triangle here. We bounced off the support. The gold chart is an example, a really good example of two things as regards pleb lines. So you'll notice that we have two lines here uh, and that I drew them in different places because it's hard to say exactly which one is the quote unquote right one to draw. You can also see that they sort of meet up, they connect down at this point right here. And then finally, they were this bottom line was useful for having some kind of predictive power or some kind of understanding over what was happening as gold broke down from really what would probably seem like the more natural line. Uh, normally, you might look at this chart and you might think, okay, I'll connect the ultimate low right here and then we'll connect to this point. And then you break down from that and you might say, oh no, gold is broken down. The, the chart's about to, to really just take a dump and uh, I better get out of gold. This is a very common thing that I see. You really want to you want to find other peaks that happen just before the most recent, like absolute low. Or it could even be possible that this spot right there, maybe that could have actually bottomed down here. And then you would still just connect uh, the other line here uh, to that point. So again, it's just pleb lines. They can be difficult to know for sure which is the right one to draw. So try and draw a bunch of them. Uh, think about it erase them, draw them again, have a coffee, come back to it. Uh, let's go to the shorter time frame though. So again, we're pushing up towards this area right here and the momentum is slowed down. I'm not entirely sure that we are gonna make it all the way to the top, but it again, it's probably one of these things where we just need to see a little bit of a cool off period. And then maybe sometime after the Fed meeting next week, perhaps 10 days, uh, right? Not next week, but the week after. Uh, perhaps we'll find some support and then gold will make it towards the top of this range. And again, this is probably taking uh, profit taking territory. Uh, so overall, again, gold is kind of giving us um, a congruent picture with with everything else that uh, we're just we're looking at a short term reversal of the overall trend that's been happening in January. 
we can go to stocks. Um, you know, we'll save, we'll save stocks for last, actually. Let's go to crypto. Let's go to total specifically. Okay. Yeah, so this is the weekly time frame on total. Very big picture view. You can see that, again, we talked about how we broke down from that. Uh, the very long rising support. And now we're kind of in this zone. And I'm not really sure um, where things go from here. Like I said, it, it wouldn't be wrong to take profit. I am still letting some of my trading stack ride here because there is the potential for, for things to go all the way to the top of this range here. Uh, and if it does, um, there's a good chance I'll take some profit there. Um, that would probably happen sometime in the next few days. Uh, by the time Monday comes around, where we could really be looking at, uh, at further pullback in stocks. So there's really nothing too exciting about this chart. Um, yeah, okay, so you can also draw kind of like this ultimate final resistance right here, which would sort of be this line. That should act as some kind of resistance, especially if we get there anytime soon. Uh, but we'll just have to see. Bitcoin. Yeah, we kind of did the same thing with Bitcoin over here, where you can draw kind of this most shallow line by using not the blow off top, but the spot right before there and then right here. So again, that just gives you an area to be conscious of when you start approaching that. Maybe we take another pump here. That, again, would probably be a good spot for a pullback. Uh, we will have to see. So, but I can't give you any like really confident predictions about where the market is going right now. Um, it seemed like a very solid play to be getting into the market for the past few weeks. It's gone so far. It's, it's really difficult to say that uh, anyone should be buying right here, to be honest. All right. Last thing we'll take a look at is stocks, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. So we actually finally broke this spot right here. Um, that was really important. We kept talking about how we need to break this resistance. We finally got through that. And the question is, are we going to keep on going? Now, I've seen a lot of people comparing to the 2001 and 2008 um, bear market. So that's what the blue and the yellow lines are here. Let's actually look at one of them. Look at 2001. We're really not looking at a 2008 type event right, right now. So the blue line is uh, 2001. That's what the bear market was doing in 2001. And there is a striking amount of similarity in the way that things have unfolded. I still don't see necessarily that we have to have this major dump right here. Um, but just so that people can see and be aware, things do have some kind of similarity in how the price action has unfolded. The thing that I would say is different is that the 2001 market was uh, kind of in denial for a long time. We, we actually didn't go down that far. So for example, this was just a 20% drawdown, which is technically not even a bear market when you talk about traditional assets. Uh, whereas on the other hand, we had already, like where people thought that stocks were probably about to go to a new all-time high uh, back in 2001, recently we were already down 25%. So it seems like we kind of got a lot of the dump time out of the way and then you can also see, let me uh, hide this. You could almost call this pattern right here an inverse head and shoulders. Um, there's, it's not quite, you still have this area right here that's not entirely congruent, but it does look a little bit like an inverse head and shoulders. So I, I'm not too convinced that we're going to have another 2000, uh, 2001 event where price just crashes down another 25% from the lows. Um, but we'll really have to wait and see how the economy unfolds, how inflation unfolds, uh, and how far the Fed raises rates, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I guess that's about all I get, have for you guys today. Um, oh, you know, there was one more little thing that was important. Let's go to the hourly time frame. So a phenomenon that I think was happening on Friday yesterday. So everything was positive. I was personally waiting for another big Friday pump yesterday. And it looks like people didn't want to take profit until the very last second. So what happened was we were just up and up and up for the entire day. And then at the last second, um, people took profit. It's like if we go to the 15 minute. 
Yeah. So it's like people were, were excited. They wanted to wait. They wanted to get as much of the profit as they could, but they were kind of worried about something. And I think it was probably the Fed meeting next week. They didn't want to hold their positions over the weekend. And so they were trying to get every bit of that profit that they could, basically communicating an overall a bullish mentality, but that they wanted to limit some of their risk and take some of that profit at the last thing they did on Friday before close. So overall, that's that's a very nice bullish mentality. So again, summary, I think the picture is painting that we should have some kind of small pullback right here. This would be healthy. Um, this should continue into the Fed meeting. And then hopefully if we get any kind of good news from the Fed meeting, um, they're not too hawkish. They're not trying to talk the markets down again. Um, that would be a good opportunity to get back into the markets um, if you had taken some profit and then, uh, yeah, just see where things go from there. Awesome, man. And you had, you said you thought at what point do you think Monero would be able to climb again against Bitcoin? Obviously, we're seeing it right now, but I think you had mentioned earlier that we might start to see Monero climb again against Bitcoin. So for the time that we have a broader bull market or like a miniature bull market, I think that Monero is going to have the tendency to chop sideways. Right. Uh, this was a really nice move, right? And it was very sustained. It lasted for an entire year. So we probably need a little bit of consolidation right here, just from a charting perspective. Mm -hmm. So really the answer to that question is how far do we think this miniature bull market in stocks and crypto is going to go for as long as that's happening for as long as they're increasing the leverage of the crypto system, uh, we're likely going to chop sideways. And then as soon as that starts going to the downside again, um, that's where Monero, the ratio should start to shine again. I don't have any like solid hard timeframes to say, you know, exactly where I think this will end up. I think it's probably a good guess that going into March and April, we should generally have positive momentum. Uh, and then we'll reassess as we get closer. Cinco de Mayo, right on time, right on time. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you as always. Uh, I, I love these. I know any, anybody that's like somewhat into price has got to be loving these because you do, you do an amazing job, man. They talk about the market uh, as a whole. You're, you're fantastic. Thanks, brother. All right. All righty. Let's uh, move on. To, yeah, let's keep it moving. Body, Thank you so much. Maybe we'll see you uh, in, the, in the spaces later. Uh, yep. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.